WKLC is presented by Barclays and Curry's PC World. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the UKLC. Sorry about the extended break, we had to wait for our teams from the Group A Initial 2 to actually finish up their game and then we had to give them a break and stuff, so that's why we had a bit of an extended break here on this stream, but there were obviously other streams you could bounce to to fill that time out. But we are back and we are getting ready to go into our first best of three of the day, which is going to be our Group A losers bracket between Orglus Randoms, who got pretty whole-handedly stomped by London Esports, and then Degree Esports, who lost versus uh, Viperio in the Group A initial two. So the winner of this game will go through to the decider and the loser of this game unfortunately is knocked out of the uk lc uh qualifiers and unfortunately they are done for now so let's talk a little bit about our last game orcs orglus randoms they kind of got crushed yeah i mean coming into this i felt like london esports were one of the top teams i think that was the expectation uh and they delivered it was a very controlled game. I think they showed some of the weaknesses that Orglus Randoms have had, leaning too much on the scaling aspect, not giving enough options to their jungler, and it just completely fell through. They kept trying to contest these drakes, and they were kind of disastrous, and it just kind of showed the caliber of team that is there in this tournament. But the thing is, in Group A, assuming if London Esports wins their next match, then you won't have to face them again, because in when we go into Day 2 tomorrow, uh, you'll be playing against a team from Group B. If London Esports do lose their match and you have to play them again, then it just means Viperio are super smurfers, so you're pretty doomed anyway. But I think August Randoms definitely showed some issues. I think Degree Sports, unfortunately, you weren't able to see their games, but it'll be interesting to see how they interact with each other. I think particularly top lane could be a place to watch because FN, the top laner for Degree Sports, he is someone who will play champions that can apply pressure on the lane, that can split push, Champions that would build the Blade the Rune King and love to go up against Vegas Maokai, for example. So yeah. I think that's potentially an area they could attack. Otherwise, I feel like the rest of the map, there tends to be a little bit of scaling on the side of Degree Sports as well. Maybe not the most high pressure team, which means we may end up having a little bit of a slower one, at least in the early stages. But things could have changed. We will just have to see how things pan out. Because that's the thing, Degree Sports, when they played, uh to qualify to get here in the university tournament that was quite a long time ago so it's been a pretty long break obviously the game that they did play was uh we didn't get to see uh it wasn't on the mainstream and august randoms were playing at the same time so they won't have seen and I, it just basically means that there's a lot more information available about august randoms right now yeah obviously we've also if you watch this stream you've obviously seen that uh august randoms play you didn't really get to see them play too much, to be completely fair to them. They kind of got hard smashed, but like you said, London Esports are one of the teams who we've kind of pegged as one of our favorites coming in, uh, especially from the Group A. Now, if we look over um, where everyone's sitting at the moment, it's going to be uh, August Randoms are on the blue side this game, and Degree Esports are on the red side. Um, Run me through a little bit here. So are there any names on the side of Degree who we recognize here, or are they just mainly people from this university um, circuit? Mostly just people from the university. Um, from Bristol, I believe, which was my university. So, <laughs> oh. yeah, there's a little little tidbit for you. Um, but a lot of the university players, I know Chen Tang and Longstaff, been all around for quite a while, so consistently playing and never really able to get that title. Warwick typically has been one of the teams who has, has sort of held control on that. And we can see the other university team here is Grey Warwick, but this is an opportunity for, for Bristol to sort of prove themselves as a formidable team. And we're on to draft now. We're seeing Thresh and Varus. No real surprise to see those ones band away. Yeah, pretty standard bands here so far, but let's like, take a look at the next band. It's gonna be the Yasuo. We have a target ban there more than anything, denying that from maybe Chen Tang or Effian. As you said, he likes to play these aggressive top laners, so maybe you could see the likes of the Yasuo top, but it is going to get banned away, though. So not here. Barry's Corky is going to be denied. We saw that in the last game. The game was really built around him, and unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to deliver, partly due to just the jungle collapsing around him from the invades onto Freyze, and Freyze's Zack just felt so, so far behind the entire game. One last ban here for the side of Orglus Randoms. And what are they looking to ban away? Is the Echo. 
bit of an interesting one that's more of a specifically targeted one. We have seen a bit of Echo Jungle come up and it has been delivering. It's not typically something you see banned in the first rotations. We're seeing things like the Syndra left open, the Trundle does get banned, but there's still the likes of the Graves available. A lot of options. Um, we haven't seen too much Callisto overall. That's something that we saw a lot of the Chinese and Korean teams playing quite a bit in the MSC, but so far, not too much. Graves will get secured though for Phrase here. Yeah, we saw him get completely destroyed by it in the last game. Decides to pick it up for himself this game round. Now we're looking over to what the side of Degree Sports want to pick up. At the moment, looking like we might just see the set come out. Yeah, solid pick. Can be flexed between three lanes, so don't see any real issues with taking that. And Senna is available if they wanted to pick that up and pair it in tandem. But for now, they're just going to take that Syndra that we highlighted on before. A lot of power from that. And I wouldn't be too surprised if Vega just took the Sorok in this situation. In theory, you can flex this, but we have not seen them really look to do that so far. It's been going in the top lane consistently. It gives a ton of scaling. If you have champions like Set and Cinder who have quite a lot of burst damage available to them, Soraka can completely shut that down with their healing with that wish available. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, Soraka locked in, the Cinder locked in. It looks like we may just be seeing something else come out here. So I think it's the Amumu lock in here. placeholder uh typically so yeah placeholders are enabled because on the regular uh the regular tournament server so if you do see a situation like this you just got to make the assumption that it is a placeholder uh and so hopefully we'll get information afterwards or likely we'll have a remake of the draft and you'll be able to see them what it is but for now we're assuming that's a placeholder we see the lease in on the other side it's ezreal ezreal okay um so mumu equals ezreal everyone oh no yeah yeah mumu so Bit of an interesting one. Uh, getting priority on one of the stronger AD carries. We could have potentially seen like a center, but maybe they felt that was a bit too telegraphed. Um, but for now, just going to go to the next rotation. Vlad banned away. And overall right now, uh, Degree Sports have drafted a lot of heavy aggression nearly. They have a lot of tools to play around with and to sort of make impacts on the map. Whereas once again, it's a situation where August Randoms want to take a bit more time. You know, the Soraka is going to be a monster in the later stages of the game. The Graves, although he's relevant early, can farm up and be happy with that, especially compared to a Lee Sin. And the Ezreal as well isn't exactly the most lane dominant, dominant AD carry. So could see very much a slower game uh, attempted coming out from the side of August Randoms. See the Darius band away. And then Yumi not wanting that to be paired up with the Ezreal. So just again, cutting down that healing and uh, scaling tools away from all the surroundings. A lot of areas being targeted towards Effen. And we know he is someone who likes to apply pressure in the top lane, particularly when he's most likely matched up against the Soraka. So with Jackson Darius gone, he's just going to lean on towards that Aatrox. And it can be pretty difficult to deal with. If Soraka does get caught by the Infernal Chains and then a single knockup, you very much could lose a ton of your HP in a single combo. And the sustain for Matrox means you're not too bothered about any of the poke coming out from Soraka, which is pretty low more recently. There isn't too much damage there. Looks like we might be shifting things up here in the bot lane, potentially. Starts to bounce away from that and go for the Cassadin mid lane. So there's I mean, offer a fair amount of scaling over we, to the side of um, August Randoms. Again, they're kind of investing in Berry to be a scaling option for their team. I mean, we said scaling. Uh, I can't hit on that enough. We did say there was going to be scaling on the side of August Randoms, and they've stuck to it. Now, Berry had a monstrous game on the Cassidy in the open qualifiers where he, he got so many kills in the early game and just completely carried. I'm concerned here because, again, it's another situation where you're going to have to look for that scaling. We're seeing a Lulu, which is really interesting paired with an Ezreal because it's not a typical combo you see. You normally see one of those more crit-based hyper carries or on-hit hyper carries. Uh, whereas Ezreal's so safe and self-sufficient and a lot of his, his damage is long-ranged poke that you don't normally want to pair a Lulu with him. But they just secure a heavy amount of scaling, but we're just seeing a ton 
of pressure being put down in the early levels by the side of the Grease Boards. Lock, rounding out with that Tristana to pair up with the set, that's a ton of fall-in damage. You land the stun from the set, you land the explosive charge, it's very easy to 100 to 0 someone. Yes, yeah, really, really strong combos getting picked up across the board here. We will talk about that, but we are going to quit to a, cut to a quick break. And when we're back, we're getting loaded into our game. So guys, don't go anywhere. We will see you shortly. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Right, so we got our lobby all loaded in. We've done the Rika selection and everything. So that is all done. Now, Orcs, talk to me a little bit about these teams. What are we looking at? You keep saying scaling, scaling, scaling when you talk about Orcless randoms. What are we looking at on the other side? What are Degree Esports looking to do? Aggression. And actually, they've switched out the Tristana to put that mid in the Syndra bot lane, which is an interesting decision, but honestly, I quite like it. One of the big weaknesses of an Ezreal in the laner phase is priority. Uh, he struggles a bit to shove the wave in unless you're spamming your Q, and even then, there are champions who will beat him. A Cinder will absolute control priority, and that's even with it being a range first melee support. So it's going to offer a lot of pressure there. You also have the Tristana into the Kassadin, and Kassadin has no good lanes to go to. Sometimes you see a Kassadin go top instead of mid, if that's a better matchup, but right now, it's either Aatrox or Tristana. Aatrox is marginally better, but you're in a longer lane. And I think both are bad options. So this is super punishing in the early game. We're going to see once again, Orglus randoms. They're going to have low priority in the bot lane, no priority in the mid lane, and in the top lane as well. And it's again a situation where Phrase doesn't have the lane priority to work with in the jungle, and he's just going to struggle. And ultimately, yes, if they get to, say, 30 minutes they will start to really become a force to be reckoned with. But we saw them try and do that against London and it just didn't work. And again, it's not like these champions from the side of the Grease Sports just fall off a cliff. Tristana and Syndra still will be relevant. Sure, I will say compared to game, the first game of the day, this is leaning more heavily in terms of scaling to, degree, uh, to August Randoms. But the early pressure is just astronomical. This is the problem that I think we've seen quite a few times now. Well, two times now with August Randoms is they really lean into kind of wanting to transition their mid into late and they kind of almost abandon the early and the laning phase of the game and it feels like both times they've kind of been called out and read on that and you can see the Grease Sports have locked in a comp which but like you said scales well has a solid mid game and it also has good laning phases all around the board here so I'm curious to see whether or not they can actually hold on in this game 
and not just hard lose in the early game. If they, because if they can kind of slow this game down and play at their own pace, and you know, they're going to lose some CS here. They might lose some plates here and there. They may even lose first turret blood. But as long as they don't give too much over in that time, and they do get that scaling, you know, once the Cassidy hits level eleven onwards, that's when we can maybe see them try to push some kind of this is kind of scaling advantage they are looking to try and accrue for themselves now remember this is a best of three so even if this doesn't work maybe this is when we'll see august randoms kind of drop the scaling aspect to their games and maybe look to play a little bit earlier we'll have to see but maybe they can pull it out of the bag we'll have to see how they're going to do here i think for me you always want at least one lane you can play around and they don't really have that here and on top of that one issue I had is we saw against London, they wanted to play to the late stages of the game, and yet they were still contesting those early objectives, particularly the Dragons, they kept trying for. And I understand that because there's this sort of, there's this way you can play the game, whereas if you want to go later, if you pick up the first two Dragons when the enemy team is prioritizing, say, Herald and Tower Platings, it stalls the game out. Because essentially, Dragon Soul is, if a team gets that, it can often be a game ender, especially as it enables uh, Elder Dragon after that. So it, the, for every dragon the scaling team takes, you're delaying the game by at least five minutes. But the problem is you have to find a good opportunity. If you're just taking the Drake and you're throwing away, you know, 2,000, 3,000 gold to do so, it's not viable. And that's the thing I think that August Randoms need to realize if they're going to play this scaling. And that's my concern for them because there is no sort of second chances here. It is a best of three. So if they do lose this game, they'll have another opportunity. But the end result is if they lose the series, they are out. They have no opportunity to come back. Also, I have been told. Uh, so I was saying uh, the top laner for Degree Sports name was Effen, but I've been told it's a Welsh name and it's pronounced Evan. Oh, it's so, Evan. Yeah, little tidbit for you. Who knew F meant V? <laughs> well, when you're Welsh, why not? All right, well, looks like the teams are locked and loaded. We are finally loaded into the Summoner's Rift. Unfortunately, we are playing this on the live client, so there are some spectator delays we have to kind of play around here. Um, but we're loaded in. We're ready to go for our second game of the day and our first series of the day. It's really on the side of August Randoms and Degree Sports to bounce back from their earlier losses, especially August Randoms, because they were dispatched very quickly by London Esports in their first game of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And it, there's that opportunity to bounce back. And as we said before, London is a really formidable force to be reckoned with. So take it with a pinch of salt. I'm just concerned about the game plan going into this game. There is a clear win condition if you can wait to a certain point, but it's never a good one. I feel like an inactive win condition can be really hard to do because you make a couple of mistakes and the momentum just starts rolling against you. And then you have to ask yourself, okay, can we give up this? Can we fight this? Do we let them take Baron? Do we let them take Dragon Soul? And it's a lot of questions that it's hard like, to, to gauge like an, a complete answer for. It's very difficult sometimes to switch on the momentum. Often you're waiting for the waiting for the enemy team to make a mistake or slip up. Now that can definitely happen, um, but we'll just have to see. Right now though, I am looking towards the side of Degree Sports and particularly their jungler, Gadunica, to sort of make the impact in this early game. He has lanes he can play around. There's no bad options. All three lanes are very much gankable. They have set up and they can be vulnerable. I was actually really curious to see whether or not Chen Tang actually leveled his E at level one. Sometimes when you see the mid lane Tristana, they don't level E, so they don't hard shove. Uh, they did level E, so they are looking to kind of hard shove into Berry. But sometimes so, if you want to just kind of control the wave instead of shove, you actually don't level an ability until level two. So I think it depends what your game plan is. If you think your jungle is going to come level two, you can let it push into you. And then when you hit level two, the cast is overextended. You jump in, your jungle is there. But if he's shoving in now, he can get it to crash under the tower. It bounces back and then he'll hit level three when cast is overextended. So this is going to hit the tower now. It's going to cause the next wave to group up. And start pushing against Ooh. them. So you engage bot. Longstaff flash forward. They got the ignite. They missed the scatter of the week. And Longstaff gets chunked. But so does Synapse. Has to use the heal, the flash, and the exhaust bot lane. The flash ignite from the side of Degree Sports. Yeah, and that's two. In theory, that's two for three in summoners. But the thing with Set and the reason why he goes Omnistone isn't for Omnistone itself. It's for the secondary runes. He has Nimbus Cloak and he has Hex Flash. And all this set is going to do is charge up the Hex Flash and keep trying to make these plays. 
He's got the phase rush as well on at the moment. So that's a lot of movement speed. Throws out the Haymaker for his shield. Liam looks to come in. They get for the damage. Gonna land the kick from the lease in. The flash will be forced. And that is no summoner spells bot lane at three minutes here. And that's just exactly what you want. If the CC connects, if Longstaff gets a good Hex Flash, you follow up with a Syndra Stun, and then a target is dead. No sums available makes this very vulnerable for the bot lane. And although Graves is shadowing nearby, he's not really going to be able to do anything this early in the game. I think right now, all Degree Sports need to do is reset their bot lane, pick up some extra items, maybe some Doran's Rings or a uh, Dark Seal for the Syndra, get some more mana behind you, and then you're able to start applying pressure. Now... Uh, looks like Tristana has actually kept this wave shoved in, so there won't be any overextension from the cast in, but it's been kept at bay. We've seen Graves come in bot lane, but not much you're going to be able to do here. Yeah, well, that scatter of the week, it just makes it way too hard to close in. Ben's going to be able to send them pack in, and now it looks like got Dunica trying to see if he can make something happen here onto Vega. There is still that silent zone to play around, which can actually make tower diving a Soraka really, really rough, along with the healing from the Q. It looks like they're just going to pull it off for now. Vega hold his, held, held his nerve in that lane. Absolutely did. And the resets come in. I see seeing an Amtome from the Cinder, which I don't agree with. I think you want the early power. I'd personally favor a second Doran's Ring or a Dark Seal. Um, potentially even a Corrupting, although it's a little bit later. Normally you get Corrupting first, then you get, say, a, a Dark Seal to follow. But I personally favor the early pressure. We do see a Cold coming out from Liam, so... I think that sort of indicates what they want to do in this laning phase. Farm, farm, farm. Not die as well. <laughs> yeah, it's also kind of important. But I think you can see just the Syndra there. Three abilities and the whole wave's just gone. And that's the sort of power available and it frees the setup to potentially roam and apply pressure. Oh, five minutes on the clock. It's only a 100 gold lead. No one's gone down, but the pressure is very much alive. If you look at the map, it is just red side pushing all lanes at the moment. And FaZe kind of just wants to farm for the moment. Chen Tang with the demolish, just stepping up with the bomb as well. It's going to be able to get some serious damage onto that turret. And this does mean that the Grease Sports are going to be able to turn their attention towards this Cloud Drake and get their first one for themselves. It's great if you want to deny the team that want to scale these dragons. It also can offer you an early soul if you can pick it up early enough. Yes, and I'm just glad to see that Freeze didn't decide to dash over the wall and try and solo it and then die, um, as we saw last game. He's accepted. I'm just going to chill and farm. That's all he really needs to do. And Tristana getting a lot of damage down on this tower, taking the demolish as we see from those solo lane Tristanas, and already two plates. So as much as the CS isn't that much of a lead, the, the extra plating is a significant thing in this situation. Kadonika looking to come in. They've got themselves the face breaker off, and Synapse is going to go down. A Haymaker to secure the kill. Liam can do nothing but watches. Now, Vega with a fancy dancing, trying to dodge away from Evan, but Evan can't connect a single one of those darkened blades. Now they actually get another face breaker, almost layered it into the stun from the Syndra, but Liam's able to dash away in time. Yeah, I don't envy Synapse being flashless on Lulu into this bot lane. It's never going to be fun. His flash is coming up soon, but it's likely just going to get burnt again. And he has gone down, so given a bit of gold over. Top lane, Vega's not really getting much farm, but on a Strock, it doesn't matter too much. Hasn't died yet, which is something that can happen in this matchup. I think one of the critical things was dodging away from those Darkened Blades. Now, actually, you've seen Synapse has roamed up, and they're looking to challenge Gurunica. If the Polymorph comes in, he be could careful. die. If they get the smite off, which they do, they deny it. And now Freyze has ultimate. They're looking to come in for Longstaff, but they get him out with a collateral damage. Longstaff now has to one versus two, but he has got the backup of his team. Chen Tang's going to jump over the wall. In comes Evan. He's looking to chase his face. Has to run away from the Tristana, but the rocket jump is reset. And over the wall, Chen Tang goes, finding himself the kill. It's a one for one. Just as we're talking about the flash coming back up for Synapse, it goes down again. They get the kill onto Gadonica, but they do end up losing Freeze. So trading down slightly, but I wouldn't complain too much in that situation simply because you are the scaling composition. If you're trading even remotely close, then you're going to be fine in that scenario. It was one for one in kills. They do trade down in terms of summoners. You'll take that. You can see Chen's continuing to play up, wants to get as many plates as possible. 
Should not actually find that one as Berry was able to send him away as Longstaff now looks for Liam. That's already the dash away. They get the knock up. They got the chains on. The wish has been used, but into the Darkened Blades Liam goes. In comes Fraser, the teleport by Berry as he jumps forward onto Longstaff. Longstaff still has the shield to work with for the moment, and they're turning their attention towards Evan. Evan's looking to make a run for it. The slow from the Glitter Lance isn't quite enough just to kill themselves the kill. A lot used top lane there from the side of August Randoms, and Chen Tang just uses this opportunity to get more and more gold in his pocket. Yeah, so I mean, it looks like a good turnaround play, but the end result is they don't get any kills there back onto the side of Degree Sports. They do save the Soraka, but they end up losing a lot of pressure in the bot lane. Oh, Liam, no! Yeah, Just there's... kicked into the wall. Not much you can do in that situation. TP actually coming in now from Evan, Evan sorry, and he's looking to apply some pressure here. Leaning towards that Rift Herald that was started up by Phrase. He's now been zoned away. And it just feels like... Uh, we're seeing more life come out from the side of August Randoms than we did see in their game one. But they are still struggling. They are showing the weakness of their composition in terms of being able to challenge uh, Degree Sports right now. Looks like Phrase is going to get zoned off as Longstaff has made his way over. Liam's coming in. They do have that showstopper. No, they don't have that showstopper available. And the blue buff was secured by Phrase. They deny it from Berry, which is actually pretty big here on the Cassadin. And it looks like Rift Herald is going to get secured by Gadon by Gadonica. That's a really hard thing to say. It's cool. Who's got a favorite name for you in this game? I actually think it might be Gadonica. I don't, I don't know if there's meaning cool. behind it, but it's a good name. It sounds like a, it sounds like it could be a boss from a game or something. Yeah, it does sound it does sound very much like a JRPG boss. I could imagine getting mashed up against Kadunika. <laughs> as long as you bring your long staff, you might be alright though. Hey, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so taking stock of the game, three thousand gold lead for the side of Degree Sports. They have one dragon, another one spawning soon. They got that mid tower, which is hugely important. I can't emphasize that as much. Shoving that in does establish oh. a lot of control. And that wave is going to get picked up there by Tristana. Ultimately, we're seeing Cess leads across the board in favor of the side of Degree Sports. The only exception is the jungle, where Graves has been farming pretty heavily. But it's just, this is a lead, a big lead that's been picked up by uh, Degree Sports. But it doesn't compare to the lead we saw in the previous game up against London Esports that August Randoms had. So the game is definitely going better, but it is not going good. I'm fairly certain Liam missed that plate top lane. Uh, Phrase tried for it, and that was pretty close. Props to him. Doesn't actually quite connect with the classical damage. We're looking at Ocean Soul, which is terrifying when you're playing versus the set and the Aatrox. A lot of sustain already on them, and it's just going to get even worse. Yeah, I think it's widely seen that Ocean Soul is arguably the strongest soul. Uh, just a little bit overtuned. I think on some champions, it's not as impactful. They don't have big HP pools, but they definitely have that here. Now, throwing down the Herald, they're not going to look for the dive because Graves has shown up. But the Herald should be able to get a couple of these plates. I don't know if they're even going to get it in range. They got it in the middle of the minion wave. And Freys actually might just be able to take it out in time. So the Herald is wasted. Really odd placement there, and Berry comes over the wall. He's got the Rift Walk. He gets kicked back, but the Wish comes down to heal him up. They pull him back momentarily as he gets pulled out by the Showstopper. But Berry will be taken down. And now Freys has to go up versus Evan, and Gadunka Ooh. finds himself one with the wall bounce off the queue. Evan's trying to heal, trying to survive, trying to he stay alive. Dive. Evan gets taken down for the double kill. It was so, so close, though. Just the Graves with the Soraka and the Lulu just not going down. I will say Longstaff did a ton of work there. I was expecting a Cassidy double, maybe triple kill, and they denied that. But that Graves, so tanky with the True Grit passive. And then the healing and shielding coming in just meant they were oh, unable to take oh, it down. Oh, oh the exhaust Jay. isn't enough. What exhaust, a kill. Just complete confidence. Yeah, just knew his damage. I literally thought the exhaust would be able to reduce the damage enough. He didn't use his ignite. Wasn't in range at any point. Um, close. They're pinging ignite though. <laughs> yeah, they, they actually think they, they used must have it. used ignite. No, didn't use it. <laughs> Liam just kind of caught out. And this is a thing on this Ezreal. You've gone for the call. You've gone for 
scaling look at the later stages, but... Freys gets himself the blind off. I don't think Chen's going to be able to live through this one. Not with Sinat Sprinter there. Freys, four and one. What a redemption arc for him on the Graves after that devastating show he had on the Zac in our first game of the day. Yeah, and I'll say I made a mistake. The the Lulu was not there for Ezreal. The Lulu is there for the Graves. And Synapse has just been running around with Freys and making him an absolute monster to deal with. This champion is really strong right now. Really overshooting in a lot of people's opinions in the jungle. Just the uh, sheer value you can get in terms of clearing the jungle and then also the strength of the champion. Combined with a Lulu and a Soraka, it is going to become difficult. And as much as they're still 4k gold up, they got two dragons. Right now, degree sports have to be looking towards that Dragon Soul. That needs to be secured by them. Otherwise, I have concerns with this game falling out of their control because the later it goes, the scarier it gets. You can see they're itching to find a dive here as Longstaff finds Synapse Sprinter to get the flash out. And now Vega just caught out and alone. Gedonica gets the kill. I mean, that's a good start. Keep picking up those kills and sort of denying them for me not to contest. Right now, Gantang's just pushing the top lane. And there isn't really anyone who can answer him. We saw Liam struggling in the side lane. Cassidy isn't going to have a good time. Soraka, I mean, no chance at all. But they're now looking for Liam. Yep. Oh! Predicted him with the kick. Liam will fall. Gedonica finds that kill. Oh, that Much deserved on that one. And Berry is being melted down There's by the Jen. There's the ignite coming in now. Berry goes down. Gedonica with the very clean... Fraze is looking there. to try and turn this, though. This is a lot of damage by Chen, but Fraze is also finding some himself. Chen gets Ooh. out with 33 HP. He had to go back in for the auto attack so that he could get the reset on the bomb. Oh, true comes shot. in. True shot, true shot. We're tracking it. It's coming in close. I think it's on the mark. He's going to oh. snipe him down. Liam from downtown with a true shot barrage. The accuracy here, just with the Lee Sin prediction cue, Liam with the ult. We're seeing some really sweet plays coming out right now. Bit of back and forth. Dragon coming up soon, though. And we're still seeing a 6,000 gold lead for the side of Degree Sports. So as much as we're seeing some nice plays, don't think it's quite enough yet for them to challenge them in a team fight. There is some life in this game still for the side of Orgless Randoms. I want to talk a little bit about Berry here, because Berry's actually gone for the Rod of Ages. I've seen a lot of Cassidins recently skip the rower. Why do you feel that Berry's gone for it? Does he just want that additional scaling option to him? Absolutely does. And seeing Synapse trying to contest some of this vision, you've got to be a bit, a bit cautious here. There's a lot of pick potential available. This is the one you want to steal. We saw Freys attempted it before. He's dashed into that bush on the other side. He has the smite available. Okay, he's put the blind down. He's put some damage out as well. Trying to chunk them for the moment. The ignite has gone down. He has to jump back out. Just the dragon gets ignite. reset, though. His phrase can now look to kind of come back over the wall if he wants to. Has got the backup of his team. Jumps in. Goes for the kill. Can't quite get it as he gets showstoppered over the wall. Longstaff actually gets a free man oh, face breaker. And the haymaker out there. Fraser's got a lot of damage on with the shielding, the healing. Everything is layered onto this jungler as Chen Tang finds himself the kill. Evan has joined into the fray as well. Dragon number three was picked up by the side of Degree Sports. They're one off that ocean soul. But they did at least trade out there. Well, Barry might be looking here for Chen Tang. He doesn't have any more jumps. Pretty comfortable. Chen's doing a lot of damage to him. Berry has to find this kill quick. Otherwise, he is dead. They look for the damage from the Syndra and the scatter the weak's enough. <laughs> misses the Q. Misses the, the orb uh, on the follow-up, but then just gets the E, and that's all you need. Scatter the weak is enough to take down Berry. And he's not had a good game so far on this casting. We've seen him before on these on this cast in the early game pick up a bunch of kills. And he's been trying to, but he's just been shut down by Degree Sports. They picked up that third dragon, 7,000 gold in the lead, about to pick up a second Herald, and things are looking really rough right now. We're in a situation where they're not going to hit their scaling marks for quite a while. They are going to have to fight that Ocean Soul dragon coming up in about four minutes. And if they don't, it just feels like the game is over. And even if they do, unless they win a team fight from this far behind, it's feeling very rough. We've seen August Randoms stick to this sort of scaling game plan 
And this is the second game in a row where I'm kind of doubting it. All right, Katadin's so far away from really kind of hitting any item break points. Level 11 comes through soon, so you do get a bit of cooldown reduction on your ultimate. And it's when Katadin's considered to kind of hit his first kind of major spike. But still feels like you're a long way off getting your Archangels. Uh, that tier has only been picked up in the last few minutes. So I think Barry's a fair way of actually stacking that. You can see the gold difference mid lane. 9k to 4.8. Yeah. That's a disparity, all right. And as much as we always talk about how there's a level 16 cast in, Castle Win will come in. I don't think that you're going to hit that point. And the critical thing is it's hitting that point when that Ocean Sulfite is available. We're going to have level 11 on casted in. We're not going to have... We might have a fully stacked Rod of Ages. We're not going to have a fully stacked Seraphs because you just don't have the gold for it yet. You're not going to be strong enough. Right, there's a fair amount of damage there. Two Gadonka, but not able to commit and find himself the kill. So they're slowing down a little bit. I believe Gadonka still has the Herald on him, so we'll see where they want to throw that out. As uh, Baron Nash is spawning up in a minute's time. Looks like Evan might just be looking for Barry here. Finds him with all of these darkened blades. Barry is able to shift away at the last moment, but loses yeah. half his health. Kill pressure is not there, but he can chunk him out. And I think just looking at the items across the board, you don't have the Triforce or the stacked man immune for the Ezreal. Oh, Phrase is looking though here. Yeah, that's going to be the world ender used. He's able to dodge away on some of these darkened blades momentarily. The true shot barrage has been using the teleport is coming down. Evan looks to chase. He flashes in, gets himself the chains. Phrase flashes away as well. Gadonica looks to chase for a little bit more, but for the moment, it looks like they're just going to be able to peel out, move away. Chen Tang in the meanwhile just pushes down in this bot lane with the Infinity Edge with that Blade of the Ruined King is just liquefying anything he comes into contact with now on this Trist. And no one can answer the Tristana. There's no one who wants to go up against this 10,000 gold Trist. So Rocket and Kastin both have about 5,000 5, gold apiece. They just will not stand up for the Trist. The Ezreal is down in levels from being in a dual lane. There's no contest. And it's just going to mean they can keep taking towers across the map. And all they need to do is just wait for that dragon. As soon as they pick up that soul, I think the game just goes out the window. And again, I'm looking at these items. we just seen a Zeal picked up for the Shristana. Two and a half items with tier two boots. You compare that to the Kassadin. Nowhere near having the gold for that Saras to be completed. Ezreal, no Triforce, no com uh, stacked Mirror Mana. Even the Graves, who's been doing well, still hasn't completed that second item. I think he's going base now to get it. But it's just so concerning. This is the break point. And you ha right now, all these randoms have to sit here and ask themselves, do we just give up the Ocean Soul? Do we say, let's leave it, let's try and contest uh, Elder Dragon and Baron? And I don't have the answer. I don't I don't think it's a good call, but I don't think you have a choice. Well, they're looking for the fight here. The showstopper's being used. The wish, the wild growth, everything on the phrase. But he still falls down. A double kill for Chen Tang as he looks for Liam. Tries to find himself a little bit more as Liam's able to shift away to safety. Chen Tang finds himself a double kill. The Rift Herald gets summoned. And it looks like Degree Sports are going to pick themselves up another turret. The charge is going to get cancelled out on the Rift Tower, so they're full health for this next charge. And this could just be the base opening here. Yeah, Kasten can't do anything. No wave clear and no opportunity to make use of anything he has without going into melee range. Going to take the inhibitor as well. Maybe get a charge off onto the Nexus Towers. I think they'll be able to defend it before then, but even so, they've broken the base. They have the mid inhibitor. They have the Ocean Soul. This is where that question came from. No team wants to give over an Ocean Soul, but they try and contest it. They lose members. They also lose the mid inhibitor and still lose the Ocean Soul. It's rough. It's really rough. Degree Sports looking stellar coming into their second game of the day. Remember, they did lose to Viperio at the beginning of the day off on a different stream from our one. I believe we're up to four streams now. <laughs> There's three official ones going on at the moment, though. So if there are any games that you want to miss, you, uh, any games you miss, Orcs put all the links up on his Twitter. And interesting so you can fact, go back and watch them all after this. In interesting fact, uh, London Esports actually lost their game off stream. So we were saying they're looking like one of the favorites. They choked and just saying this fight breaking out. 
Yeah, they're looking for that kick. Can Gadonaka land it is the question. Onto Vega, the slow zone comes down. Meanwhile, Chen Tang finds himself something onto Berry. The rest of the team are just chasing up for the fight, though. Berry has found Vega. The True Shop Barrage does a fair amount of damage into the collateral damage, but a free man scatter of the week is absolutely huge. The Showstopper lands onto everyone, and Chen Tang launches in forward, finds himself another one for the team, and two go down. Yet another scatter of the week will connect. And Degree Sports find themselves free for none, and they turn to Baron. With the Ocean Soul as well, they're going to be able to heal up. Minions have to be answered in the mid lane, and you can just see Degree Sports are ready to just go absolutely ham, and there's very little that can be done in return. August Randoms have to consolidate their base. Baron's going to go down, and I really feel like this game is as good as over at this point. It'll be 13,000 gold lead after taking this Baron, just shy of it. Not a good spot to be in. And we can look at the gold again in between individual members across the board. The only one that's close is jungle and then bot lane. Those are the only two that are sort of uh, remotely close. But mid is just such a massive difference. And on a champion like Tristana who still scales pretty well, it's rough to see. It feels rough to play, I feel very, I assume, right now. You feel like right about now is when this champion really starts to kind of pop off and still just getting 1v1 by this Tristan, a 7-2, Baron Nasha, Ocean Soul. But that Blade of the Ruin King, the Infinity Edge, and the Phantom Dancer, Chen Tang is going to be a beast. There is a pretty big play here, though, for the casting. What you do is you type in chat and game, and you go, guys, just wait for my level 16. <laughs> Don't worry, guys, we've got scaling. <laughs> we've all seen it before. <laughs> but, uh... A little bit optimistic at this point. And the thing is, we have seen an Executionist now on Graves, but on no one else. And the Ocean Soul healing is really insane. They need to survive this Baron. Add another 10 minutes to the game. And then we're talking maybes. God, I don't know actually just got red smoke there by phrase they go for the true shot they go for the slow showstopper gets used by longstaff gets himself a free man combo and that's chen tang sliding in with one looking for another liam's gonna go down for the double kill he's looking for the triple i don't know who stole that but it was longstaff not gonna give it over to chen tang and now chen just gonna turn his attention towards these towers towards the nexus here for the side of degree sports they are here to play they mean business as berry is the only one who stands level 16 is just too far away it's 25 minutes on the clock it's 20 to 5 and game number one goes over to degree sports once again we're seeing augless randoms come out with a scaling composition and I think that's fine. I think the current meta, you can play scaling, but there has to be something you can do in the earlier stages of the game. You have to have a win condition. You have to be able to offer something. And realistically in that match, it was just a situation where they kind of rolled over and died. Um, yeah. Great plays coming out from Degree Sports showing they knew exactly what to do. I love the composition. They had pressure in all three lanes. They had a Lee Sin who can play around that and they delivered heavily. So kudos to them. This is the best of three. There is an opportunity to bounce back for Orglus Randoms. I just, I need to see something different. Yeah, you just throw casting down mid lane, I'm like, okay. I feel like what they need to do going into game number two is not lean so heavily on scaling. You can have scaling elements to your team. You saw Degree Sports did that as well. They put, they had scaling with the likes of the Tristana on their team, but they also did have the early power. I mean, Tristana's a little bit of an unfair example there because she has a great lane matchup into the Cassidy anyway. So it's kind of like a solid mid, early and late for the Tristana. But they, they had scaling, they had early, they kind of drafted their team comp around that. And I'd like to see from the side of um uh August randoms but going into their second game they need to try and add some kind of early lane early game pressure and it felt like phrase was maybe their mid game was maybe they're like their mid game savior but it just kind of fell apart around them a little bit too much and it's on they them just, to change it's on them to they, change they going into the next game one lane to play around one lane that's going to do something so they can actually like play off that because all three lanes are losing in priority. So Graves is sort of chilling in his own jungle, unable to do anything. He doesn't have setup for ganks. There is no lane where you're like, oh yeah, Graves can just dash in here and then they'll they'll land CC. I mean, like the only thing you have is like a flash polymorph from the Lulu, which they can still walk, albeit slowly. They just need pick a lane, give it priority, give it something to play around, and then maybe we'll see something talking. And that's why we saw bans coming out for the likes of Berry's Corky, because they just want to completely limit anything that has any impact in this early game. And it's working. We've seen teams 
consistently do this to punish Ogres randoms. And it feels like against the weaker rosters we saw in the open qualifiers, they could get away with it. They could get to the later stages, they could come online. Against these stronger teams in the closed qualifiers, when you know the stakes have been risen, they just not being allowed to hit their breakpoints. Well, it was a fantastic win there for Degree Sports, but like you were saying, it is still a best of three. There is still some wiggle room here for the side of Orgless Randoms, and they really, really need to make it work because if they lose our next game, they are out of the qualifiers, and that is their journey here at the EKLC. Done, but we'll have to see. We're going to cut to a quick break, and when we're back, we're back with game number two of the series. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you at about 10. Oh,